Alrighty, welcome back. I'm holding the camera freehand this for a minute here to show you a contrivance. Uh, it's the weights, and the, first of all, notice the bubble level on the top, and that's within two degrees, which is good. Uh, the bushing here is a weight that is in place to uh, clamp the joint while the uh, epoxy cures and the reason for all the the uh, the bricks and the hammer and all this reinforcing stuff is if you build a delicate bracing mechanism when you do clamping uh, it's way too easy for things to shift uh, irregularly shaped objects like pipe bowls are really hard to control uh, without marring the outside of them. You can't clamp them in a vise, for example. And even if you could, in this case, notice the rubber wedge there. The, uh, the cut that we made and that we're gluing to is not on the vertical plane, so the, the pipe has to be canted sideways and tilted upward. So anyway, I'm just showing you this as a example of even with a lot of practice uh, and having done this for years I still use this type of ridiculous cobbled together thing from time to time because there are no specialized tools for much of what we do and you just have to make it work. So, uh, oh the reason I didn't use that uh, reamer that I'm so fond of for holding stumbles is because it's in the wrong direction. It would have been kind of like a springboard if I'd hung it from the bottom of a, uh, a vise or something. So anyway, I'm going to put this camera back in the uh, uh, the tripod and we'll uh, take a shot at removing the Delrin rod. Here we go. It should be cured by now. And if we did everything right, this will give a little snap sound and out it'll come. There. I'm going to use a piece of rubber. It's pretty tight. There we go. And there we go. A, the false tenon that I cut into just a piece of junk blank stock held everything in alignment while the epoxy was curing. So all that's left to do now with all this gluing and extra wood business is grind this block down to where it looks like the rest of the shank in terms of size, which means be very careful of holding parallel. It's the tendency is to kind of like you're sharpening a pencil and you can always take it off but you can't put it back on so be careful. I'm going to use a belt grinder for this belt sander and uh, you've seen it before the Burr King and don't go any smaller than the tops of the bumps on this irregular finish because you'll then carve out the low spots, but you want this to stay parallel. Uh, well, actually it tapers ever so slightly, but you get my point. So, oh, also, uh, final mention, the reason for this tiny little bridge here across the bottom of the hole, well, that wasn't really deliberate, it just came out uh, as a safety measure. I decided to leave a, oh, one and a half millimeters or so of extra material on the edge end and uh, that just came with the, in the bargain. I didn't want to prematurely level or square the end of the shank and then find that I'd gotten it a little crooked or something so anyway that it's just a, a dictate of the, of the geometry that was in play there. So I'm now off to uh, grind this thing down and uh, we'll pick it up from there. Okay.
I'm back from the uh, uh, Burr King belt sander and I've also uh, used the disc sander and a small amount of uh, lapping on the uh, square flat table thing I've described to get the end of the shank right the uh, fit is pretty good and uh, all that's necessary or it was necessary to get that cleaned out of course is to take this uh, uh, chucking reamer and just clean out any uh, uh, epoxy that had oozed into a bead along the edge there uh, in fact the trickiest part of this entire thing so far has been that I did not have a a 30 degree angled conical cutter that was large enough to do the job in this sense that this guy just disappeared right on in there right I needed one that had a larger base and then it would have just been a simple matter of holding it there for the right amount of time as it was I ended up having to uh, do that by hand which takes a bit it's, it takes a bit of steady nerve so to speak but you just do one of these things and it's easy enough to remove material but it's hard to get it circular like that without uh, goofiness showing up I'm not sure why Barling used a 30 degree shoulder in there than everybody else used a 45 but uh, lesson learned I'll pick up a new cutter uh, anyway uh, you can see that uh, it's starting to look like a pipe and the uh, this seam I didn't get so close to the the original wood as to uh, buzz that off that's gonna disappear into a just like a hair thin line extremely thin and then uh, on the uh, 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 the texture part that we're gonna do in the restaining and so forth will hide that very small line that it'll leave but uh, structurally it should be as good as new uh, the fit as I said is uh, pretty much the way it should be already and we have a light tight no gap fit on the around all the way around it here is that all the way? yeah it's all the way down so I've uh, gone into some depth about two-tone sandblast finishes on the first set of videos I did which was a see a, a Dunhill 6 uh, 475 uh, but as I've said since then I'll rather than keep sending you guys back up the line to previous uh, videos and have you stitch it all together uh, it makes more sense for me to repeat some things and important things and this is one of them because of the how commonly wood grafts are done on in serious repair work so I'll get set up to do that and get partway finished with it and then uh, you can watch me do it for a, a little while I'll show you the cutters I use and stuff and uh, we'll go from there the uh, stem on this pipe at some point I'm not sure you can see but there's scratches that are in the surface and on both sides so at some point somebody tried to uh, sand this back into a probably because it turned kind of green with a pretty rough paper it looks like about 180 and normally when you see stuff like that you go uh oh we're we're gonna be in trouble but in this particular case they knew better than to go after the uh, registration number on the stem now the the barling cross the brand emblem here is gone and there's just you can see a little bit of uh, like two letters but I happen to have the right stamp to do that redo that so that's a, a actually kind of a gift because it means that when I'm leveling this area here I don't need to worry too much about scrubbing onto the uh, barrel portion of this stem because it needs to be refinished anyway it's kind of green 
not bad but a little bit and then get these scratches out of here use a bit of magic to get the uh, uh, the serial number thing back to uh, black without removing it I think I can do that sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't I'll tell you about it when we get there and uh, looks like the uh, rim could use a decarbonization as well as long as we're going to be refinishing this thing we might as well clean it up and do it right and I don't see anything else worth discussing at the moment I'll uh, proceed to uh, get into this uh, texturing and stuff and uh, record a little of it and then we'll restain it clean up the stem and it should be cooked alrighty then